Welcome to another F769 Discovery video. This video is about CMake. I'm going to show you how to port the System Workbench demo project to CMake. At the end, we'll have a working CMake project that we can use as a reference for a real project. Along the way, we will discover some things about the F769, such as what are the pieces and components making up the demo project, where are the source files and libraries, and how does the project get built. So, why CMake? Why do this at all? Here are some reasons. If you have to go to work to build a new binary, if you can't do work without your laptop, if you are useless on vacation, that means you're doing it wrong, I'm not afraid to say it. It means you're stuck, chained to your desk by your tools, and even worse, the vendor. So, porting to CMake will help unchain yourself. Here's how. CMake runs on the command line, which allows you to do lots of things. For example, if you want to set up a build server or a continuous integration server such as Jenkins, you want your build system to both run on Linux and run on the command line. If you've ever wanted to customize your build such as adding version numbers into the output file name or creating different build targets such as a unit test target running on the host or a unit test target running on the target, setting up these things are cumbersome on the IDE it makes more sense to use configuration files that are nicely structured and spell out what's happening. Getting off of your IDE allows you to separate deployment from development. Consider the fact that if you use the debugger integrated with the IDE, your target is probably right next to you, connected by USB. This physically ties you to your development hardware, puts unnecessary load on your host machine, and clutters up your desk. Testing will not be repeatable, and it will be slow, probably because your workstation doesn't have any testing equipment. Human readable. If you've seen auto-generated makefiles, you'll know they are unreadable and unusable. CMake uses a human readable configuration file. If you like clean software, you need a clean build system. The build system is configuration, and configuration should be treated the same as source. In other words, you put your configuration in source control. With CMake, you only have one file to track and get cmakelists.txt. You may have multiple CMake lists, but for the general case, it's one. Another thing is, CMake can be used with Visual Studio because CMake is a build system generator. I use CMake to generate make files, but it can also generate Visual Studio projects. So, your Windows based colleagues can still contribute to the project. As a last note, GDB integration with the IDE is not that great. I used to think GDB integration was everything, the whole point, but now I try not to use it at all. GDB integration is not a substitute for bad software. So how am I going to do this? There's two approaches, a bottom-up and a top-down. In the bottom-up approach, you build up your application by bringing in the different pieces one at a time and building the application up. Top-down refers to just bringing in everything and making it work. This is better for learning because we'll work with the demo app which does everything. So we'll get a sort of tour of the whole hardware platform. If I was doing the bottom-up style, it's better to know what you're doing so that you only pull in the things that you need if you don't know what you're doing, for example, if this is the first time you're using a platform, I like the top-down approach. It gives me something to reference. So basically, with this project that I'm porting over to CMake, I know for a fact that it works, it builds, all of the files are there, there's no bugs, it loads on the target, and runs fine. It's important to have that reference. So how am I going to do this? I found a cool feature in Eclipse called export, which will allow exporting all of the files out of the project. You would think this is not necessary, but the System Workbench project uses what's called linked resources, which means the files in the project aren't actually there. They are just links to files in the actual file system. You will notice that the directory structure of the project does not match that of the file system. So this export feature preserves the file system structure as the build system wants to see it. So there will be no more linked resources and there will be actual copies of the files. After the export, I'm going to run the build from inside the system workbench. 
we want to start with one good working build. So for example, I can extract all of the include directories and compiler defined switches, and also get a list of all of the object files and libraries that are being linked in. This particular project has over 160 object files plus the static libraries. One reason why this export feature helps is because the cube f7 firmware package has a lot of ambiguous source files. In other words, two source files with the same name but different contents and only one of them gets built in the project. The export feature only exports the files that are built. Eventually, we'll get to a point where all we have to do is resolve the compiler and linker errors, then we'll be done and have a nice elf file.